along with your oil cooler. A lot of people ask me this question. Crocs, no socks. Got the peach and honey sparkling water right now. And let me tell you, it is all of you guys requested that I make this video. So in today's video, I'm gonna be explaining what sensors and accessories you need from your K20 to swap over to your K24 to make your K24 run in the 8th Gen SI. Now this process should be same for the RSX Type S. I wanted to bring the SI up here because I wanted to get this thumbnail. So this is the old K20, like I said, for those of you who are new, this is the JDM K24A. You can see right down there, the little block stamp. Let's dive right in, guys. So K20Z3, K20Z3. Some things I used, some things that are mandatory in the swap from K20 to K24. For starters, you're gonna literally have your starter you're gonna use your Z3 starter. I use mine. I didn't mess with any, any K24 ones. This is the steel oil pan. This is the steel oil pan off the K24A. You have to use your Z3 one because you could see on this one, there's no rear mount brackets, guys. So the rear mount for the Z3 went in here or something like that. And the K24s don't have any bolts for the rear mount. So if you're going to be using your rear mount, which I highly advise, you need to use your Z3 uh, oil pan, aluminum oil pan. I wanted to use the steel one because it's stronger, but it is what it is. Coming up top here, you could see you can use either your the RBC manifold or the RBB stock TSX manifold. I went RBC just because it was direct fit. Plus, I can use a Z3, uh, which I the chassis I have, I can use whatever cold air intake and my throttle body to bolt onto this, and it was an easy fitment. With the RBB, it was kind of more awkward. It, it kind of went, it, it had a intake plenium, I believe that's what it's called, which is a midsection. So you had runners to go mid, and then the in, the manifold would angle downward. So I wouldn't, I would have had to use like a custom intake for that. So I used the RBC manifold from the Z3 onto my K24A block. Being that we're already up top here, I'm just gonna go, there's no order in this. You could see that I have my cam sensors plugged up, guys. I'll take the thing out right here. So I'm using my Z3 cam sensors. I don't know if the K24 ones are the same. I didn't really wanna try it. So I wanted to be safe. I use my Z3 cam sensors, both of them. I use my, um, I use my housing for the, I think this is the, the EGR. Yeah, the EGR housing. I use this. Uh, I even use this sensor right over here. This is from the K24. I just put it on the, uh, the Z3 right now. But I use my Z3. All the sensors that you see here, I transferred over. All right. Now, can't really see because I didn't take the cap off. I have my Z3 coil packs in there, right? This is another question I get all the time, which coil packs I used. I went with the K24 ones just because they were low mileage. Uh, I'm using them. I don't know if the Z3s will work. That's something I don't really have experience with. Uh, I know all the, the K-series coil packs are very similar looking, but they do have different part numbers. So I just went with the K24 ones. Moving on. <sighs> Down here, okay. This knock sensor I could not get off but you are going to use your Z3 knock sensor. I ordered a new NTK one for my K24. You're gonna use a Z3 knock sensor on your K24 block. You are going to use your whole coolant housing, water pump housing, which is this whole assembly right here. Four bolts holding it on. And then you have a, it leads into the back, which we're gonna get along to the back right now. And then you can see this is the Z3 mount. You guys need a special CRV post mount, all right? VTC oil solenoid 
I think this is the control solenoid valve, whatever it is. I use my Z3 one. I didn't want to mess with the RBB TSX one. But you could see this is uh this is the label on here. It's the RBB. So I use the Z3 one, even though they are the same. I didn't want to run into any problems. I use that. Crank pulley is off. Use the Z3 crank pulley on the K24 just because you will not be able to get to the serpentine belt on, which is another thing that I'm running from the K20. The, uh, the whole assembly here, so I have the Z3 water pump, Z3 tensioner, Z3 idler pulley, all Z3 accessories right here. This whole setup is all Z3, guys. All right, so I couldn't use the K24 crank pulley because it's very big and you cannot get the serpentine belt on so good luck if you want to try that okay crank sensor so you're going to use your z3 crank sensor on your k24 swap k20 crank sensor coming into the back here this is the k24a vtex solenoid uh looking at this thing here there is only one plug okay the z3 has two plugs so just use your z3 VTEC solenoid spool valve. Coming back here, we have this sensor right here. You have to use the Z3 one because the Z3 one has a special like a connector, like a clip on it, and uh, this one won't work. This is off the K24, but you need to use your Z3 sensor for here. And then you could see I removed the water neck, the little angle neck right here for the coolant and the plug off the Z3. I transferred it over to the K24 along with your oil cooler. A lot of people ask me this question and a lot of, I guess you guys don't really know this, but the Z3 comes from the factory with an oil cooler, okay? And this is from the K24, this short thread. But when you take your oil filter off and you remove this big stud, there flush against this surface is an oil cooler where your coolant and your oil are basically regulated and it travels with a hose to the water pump housing and it provides coolant flow and everything back here. So this is where your, your oil cooler fit. Use your Z3 oil cooler. You don't have to. It's not mandatory, I heard, but if you're gonna be racing guys and driving your K24s pretty hard, which a lot of people freaking do, this little mechanism is probably gonna help with higher revs. You know, the K24 already doesn't like higher revs as it is. So you could probably push it a little bit more run the oil cooler. Don't be like me, use your K20 head. This is the, can't really see it, but this is the RBC VTEC head. I just use my K24 head, lower miles. Um, another thing I use, I didn't, I don't want to pop this off right now, but I use my, uh, my K20 Z3 top guide because it's, it's actually longer than the, the K24 one. In terms of exhaust manifold, you can use Z3 header. I'm using my, my K20 header, the Skunk 2 header that came on my, uh, my Z3 to the K24. I was able to make that work. Even with the angle, I just use a little bit of washers on the rear mount, which goes right over here on the Z3 oil pan. Coming over to the flywheel. This is my old flywheel. You guys can't really, you know, see it, but you're gonna use your, you can use a K24 flywheel or you can use a Z3 flywheel. Um, make sure you use manual transmission bolts on your flywheel guys they're longer automatic bolts are way too short um i would have a comparison clip for you but uh yeah you can use either z3 or k24 flywheel um and then i'm using my i'm using the z3 six speed lsd trans bolted right up to the 24 no modifications whatsoever and I'm using a K20, K24 clutch, Xetti OEM. Yeah, that's that's basically it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I... That's it's basically it. It's it's literally like plug and play, guys. Obviously, there's forums out there and, you know, use this and use that. There's helpful things out there, guys. But there's also things that are like, all right, is this going to work? Or, you know, is it not going to work? So, 
for me, yeah, I did read some forums and stuff which were, you know, pretty helpful. I'm grateful that people put them out there. It's cool to get you an idea of what you need to gather and stuff. But literally, all I did was at the end of the day, I configured this. I deciphered that since I'm using my whole Z3 wiring harness, which is another thing you're going to use. This is the most helpful thing I can tell you. So I went by this theory. If I'm using a Z3 harness, the whole electrical harness, this thing right here, right? All these electronics, right? And I'm powering the K24. Even though it's another engine, it's the 2.4, that harness is designed and appropriate for the use of the original K20 sensors. So all I did was literally use all my 20 sensors onto the 24. I didn't even try to f modify anything and you know, I didn't even try to use the the VTC valve here and in the the K24 VTEC spool valve and all that crap. I just literally did a straight swap. K20 sensors, everything to the K24. All right? So a lot of you guys been asking me like what harness did you use? What what's this and that? And I had those same questions before I did it. You know, if you're going to be using the Z3 harness powering the the sensors that came off of this motor onto a new motor, stick with the original factory harness. That pretty much concludes it, honestly. Um, you know, it's a straightforward swap. There was a little bit of, you know, complications and I'll be taking care of that in another video. But other than that, Literally, same identical motor, guys. Same horsepower, difference in torque, difference in, in parts. But the parts were so interchangeable, it's unreal. I hope this video helps you guys out. You know, even though it's hot as balls, I wanted to come out here and make this for you. I was feeling motivated, I'm feeling good. A lot of you guys have been, you know, involved in this build and this process, so I wanted to take the time and, you know, inform you guys on what you would need. So if you're unsure, like I said, the best thing I can recommend to you, if you're unsure what sensor is going to work, use the sensor that came with the car, with the harness, all right? Use everything from, use everything off your K20 onto the 24, all right? Except for some accessories and stuff like the oil pan or the head, you can, you can, you could do head differences, all right? And that's another video I'm going to make is difference between the cylinder heads because a lot of people are you know and, and even for me I, oh yeah i thought the k20 head was the most superior but honestly guys there's not really a huge difference and i'm going to make a whole video talking about the differences between the two so i'm going to conclude the video i'm i'm smiling i had a really good time filming this video for you guys be sure to like Drop any comments and questions down below. Let me know what you think of the build. If I can do this swap, so can you. All right? And be, and be sure to subscribe for some more videos. I have way more videos planned. Like I said, I'm going to do a head comparison between the two engines. I have, you know, what I like better. That's another question I've been getting. So... Any of your ideas and video ideas you want to see, drop them down below. I always check the comments, guys. I read a lot of stuff. So be sure to uh, definitely hit that like button to help me out. And let's keep growing, guys. Let's get the 20K subs. I haven't really decided what I'm doing with this 20 yet, but I think I'm going to let it go. I hope I can inspire you guys. I hope that I can, you know, present my information to you. I hope you guys can take it. And, you know, say that you learned something through a lens, honestly, because that's, that's why I'm here. So I'll see all of you in the next video. Peace out. And remember, never stop wrenching. If you guys are kind of close to me and you need any help doing a K24 swap or any work done or whatever on your K-series, I mainly do 8th gens and stuff like that, just hit me up, guys. I can help you out. Uh, I can travel to you for a cheap price. So DM me on IG. I'm going to leave my Instagram right over here. So you can DM me on there. Let me know if you uh, need any help or whatnot.